So, Madam you. Mayor, with that, I withdraw. Okay, uh, the motion is withdrawn. We shall await the Integrity Commission's report uh, that has been referred to him, and I understand from the contact that he's had with my office that he is undertaking to, uh, to uh, discuss the issue with all members of council and to prepare a response to his questions. Is that right? I think you all proceed, and I believe it went to all members of council. Yeah, okay. Councillor Adams? Well, just as a matter of clarification, um, so you're withdrawing the request to have computers searched. Um, I'm not aware of who it is that filed the complaint with the Integrity Commissioner, but is that individual also withdrawing that complaint? We don't know who filed it. Uh, the complaint with the Integrity Commissioner. Well, the so Integrity Commissioner was asked to look at it. So there are two aspects to this cost expenditure. So that, sorry? I'll clarify. I'll clarify. I'll clarify. I'll clarify. Mine was a notice of motion with respect to, um, to a um, search by the IT division. I am withdrawing that motion. But you're not withdrawing I, I, I did not make any reference to the integrity commissioner. So there were, I guess, a couple of aspects to this. The, the first one was the fact that, uh, well, Frank, well, frankly, if we, if we can just speak plainly here, uh, that tax dollars were going to be used for a private birthday party, uh, even though there may be some beneficiaries and so on, uh, that, that there are some sort of benefits to the community. Uh, but then there was the request to go and search computers here at the offices and homes and the computers of staff and so on, uh, which would then result in additional expenditures. That's and then the one that's the one that's being withdrawn now yes. by Councillor Mahoney. Then there's a third aspect, which is there's the expenditure still of tax dollars trying to hunt down who it is that released this non confidential memo. Um, and, and I think we've heard loud and clear over the last week, week and a half from our residents from just about every paper out there, from every media outlet, that people are upset about the expenditure of tax dollars for the party, and they don't want any money being spent on that from the public tax coffers, and, and they certainly don't want any money being spent looking into how this how this all was made transparent and open. So uh, I very much welcome it and thank Councillor Mahoney for withdrawing this motion uh, so that our computers and our homes are no longer searched. But I guess I'm asking the question, are we still spending money on the Integrity Commissioner at 600 some odd dollars an hour? Holy well, looking yeah, into let, this. let me clarify, and maybe, uh, maybe the solicitor should clarify. I understand, could you clarify that, uh, that it is, that the Commissioner can have a request from any member of council, but that he does not divulge who asked for it, is that right? So much for transparency. The commissioner can receive a request from any member of council or any member of the public. And he, in the case of a request being made, the person who the allegation is made against, in this case council, is entitled to know the identity of the, of the complainant. So the uh, council is entitled to know the identity, and I'm assuming that will be in his report. It will be in his report. He yes. is doing the research on it at the present time. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Councilor. Well, uh, well, Madam Mayor, I, I, I said publicly that I was I was sending in the request to the Integrity Commissioner to review whether it was in violation of the Code of Conduct, and just to uh, to put this in perspective, um, Councilor Adams, the Integrity Commissioner has been asked by at least, well, it might be the same member of council, I don't know who, but we have had three or four reports already from the Integrity Commissioner since he was appointed on December 1st that members of council have made similar requests to the Integrity Commissioner and we have received his comments on it. That uh, he hasn't said who, but the, the memos that we have, or the letters we have received have said, I have been asked by a member of council yeah. to comment on this item. So uh, this is, this. thank you Madam Mayor, this is the, um, I have also asked the Integrity Commissioner to comment, as clearly other members of council have, on whether or not it was a violation of the Code of Conduct. And 
that's what he's doing. So I don't apologize for that, Councillor Adams, because uh, obviously other members of council feel it since we have the integrity commissioner and we have a question, we should be getting the answer. When we set up the integrity commissioner, let me comment. We knew it was going to be money involved. Uh, because any request that comes from the citizen or members of council. So if you're going to have an integrity commissioner, you're going to establish a budget for it. I think, though, that, you know, obviously some discretion could be used, and there is a distinction to be made in using the Integrity Commissioner to ask for advice of counsel uh, for legitimate issues. You're not, you're not aware it's a new code of conduct. Uh, if you were to pursue a, a certain item, is that a violation of the code of conduct? And those are the copies of the inquiries that I've received from the Integrity Commissioner. Uh, I haven't put in any requests as of yet. And, and I think those are legitimate functions, but I think there was a like just an enormous public outcry that we would spend any further money looking into whether or not public tax dollars should be used for private birthday parties. And I guess I'm wondering when we have that discussion, because I've yet to see the motion on that, uh, and when we actually look at the city manager's discretionary budget that allowed this to, to happen. Councillor okay. Unica. I'm sympathetic to Councillor Adams in which he says, I'm, I'm going to go a step further, but this seems to be going from bad to worse. <coughs> to be blunt, I'm sure that's the way my constituents see it. If you're concerned about $15,000 in tickets and six or seven hundred bucks an hour to investigate this one off, you're going to spend a lot more. That's not my biggest concern, though. Very honestly, you know, I was at home and I got the email as well, staff passed it on to me. And my very first question was, by what authority does this individual have the right to, in effect, subpoena me as an elected official? And I'm just going to raise that with the staff. Say, uh, forget what the issue is, but does this individual have the right to say, Council, we understand you may have had a meeting with a constituent this week. Can you tell us who it was and what was on his mind? My answer is no. Unless, of course, some court or someone by authority of uh, the law tells me I'm, complied, uh, I'm compelled to comply with the law, and I will. So I was rather taken aback by the request on its face for the fundamental reason. Councillor Adams, you may make a fundamental point. It's all new to us, so maybe I don't know any better. I thought the role of this individual was to take matters that are not in dispute and adjudicate what is an appropriate course of action. If he's an investigator, why don't we refer these things to the police and let them investigate? We'll get our lawyers involved, etc. None of which the public has an interest in. I don't think the public has an appetite for any of this. And this is why I think it's just gotten off the rails. At the end of the day, in the nature of our business, whether you like it or not, there's a little bit of thrust and parry, and there's a little bit of blood sport. We're going to end every council meeting on a harsh debate, saying, I'm concerned as to why that council voted that way, but maybe I'll refer it to the integrity commissioner. They'll say, why'd you vote that way? Who are you talking to? What's, what's really going on? You've heard me say before, and I will say again, and it's the big concern that I always had about integrity commissioners, and it's a statement I'd like to think I came up with myself. Be very careful of trying to achieve things other than what was achieved through the ballot box. The public elected us. They didn't elect an OMB. They didn't elect some overseer who's going to make it his business to investigate individual members of council on any issue. I guarantee if I try hard enough, there's a half dozen things I could come up with on this agenda that I could refer to them as well. But you don't. As I said, that's just part of the thrust and the parry of the job. So again, with apologies there, because this is new to all of us, but the very first question that I had, and I've been through this before, by the way, and I remember a very sage attorney telling me unequivocally, I think I'm quoting him verbatim, now do I know of no law in our democratic country that can compel an elected official to do anything. But unless a judge tells you otherwise, that's your answer. So I'm having a real difficulty, not on this issue in and of itself, but it's the Monday morning quarterback, so this is what happened to council. So can you explain yourself on this? No. Voted as I saw fit on behalf of my constituents. They'll judge me accordingly, just like they did last election. Where does it end? I think the public's fed up with it. I think the public just wants us to govern. And that's not what we're doing here. We're just wasting more taxpayers' dollars on something that leads to nothing other than animosity and gets an electorate upset that's heard about a new percent tax increase. So I need some, that my thought was always because what happened when I got my agenda, when I got the agenda and I saw Councilor Mahoney's motion, I thought to myself, well, why 
why is the integrity commissioner even going ahead if council hasn't even dealt with it yet? Well, I've got a separate request from individual counselors. Well, we've got them come to council anymore. I'll just make individual requests. Of absolutely no benefit to taxpayers other than getting out their checkbooks. The nonsense has to stop. So I, I'm at a loss as to why any of this has to go forward. Let's get on with the business of governing on behalf of our taxpayers. And we're not. Thank you. Don't crash the ambulance. Whatever you do.